Hey there, Matt Easton, Scholar Gladiatoria, and so what is the real big problem with HEMA in 2018? Well, I'm going to address that in a second, and I'm also going to talk a little bit about a clarification of something I said in a recent video about the width of sword blades that some people have taken in, um, in a way that I didn't really mean it. But anyway, I'll get to that at the end. First of all, the big problem with HEMA in 2018, as I see it, is the big problem with the world in 2018. And the problem is that everyone's complaining about everything. I don't know what's happened to the world in 2018. And I'm really glad that we're out of it and we're going in 2019. Let's go into the new year with some positivity um, and some productiveness and some suggestion for solutions and, and how to fix things and how to make things better instead of continuously fricking moaning about everything. And um, something I've noticed, um, particularly on Facebook, but just YouTube and various other places, um, places like Reddit and Discord and various other places, 2018 seems to have been the year of HEMA um, accumulating people who like to moan about what other HEMA people are doing. And those other HEMA people could be anyone from people running events or tournaments to people um, teaching uh, teaching classes, releasing books, um, you know, transcribing things, putting things on the internet, uh, running forums, sort of Facebook pages or whatever, or uh, YouTube channels, um, so-called HEMA YouTubers, whether I am one of those, I mean, I guess I probably am a HEMA YouTuber, but I'm also an other things YouTuber. As I've said before, I'm a freaking Matt Easton YouTuber. Uh, but uh, some people describe people like Shad, uh, Shadiversity as HEMA YouTubers or, or Scalagrim. Scalagrim maybe some of the time does some HEMA stuff but mostly not. Um, Shadiversity, he's done some HEMA videos but by and large I wouldn't call him a HEMA YouTuber. These, uh, okay, Scal has started training HEMA more regularly in recent times. Shad doesn't train HEMA as far as I know. Um, Lloyd, for example, trains HEMA occasionally. He comes to fight camp. I wouldn't describe him as a HEMA YouTuber. He's just a YouTuber. So, um, but a lot of people within the HEMA community, usually people, not always, but usually people who actually themselves aren't doing very much in, in HEMA, love to freaking moan about what other people are doing in HEMA. Like, oh, a certain well-known person from years ago in HEMA is now on a television show. Oh, why are they on a television show? Let's gnash our teeth and pull our hair out. Clearly, I can't do that. Um, but like seriously people what's wrong with you stop moaning about what everyone else is doing and maybe do something with your life uh, you know I, I understand a lot of this is just people who are unhappy with their own lives well maybe do something about that improve your own life don't go around moaning about what other people are or aren't doing that's the first thing right on to sword wits i've got that out of the way so uh, some people took what i said i so one of the things that's notable is that medieval swords as I've mentioned before, tend to be at the heavier end of the spectrum. Now, some people get a bit butt hurt when I point this out because for years, um, things like, you know, D&D &D and uh, sort of fantasy stories and stuff have described um, medieval swords as being, you know, massively overweight and only the strongest person could lift the sword and blah, blah, blah. And clearly that is ridiculous, okay? Let's just accept that, that that's ridiculous. But now let's come back to a place where we're actually looking at facts and statistics and numbers. Uh, and the fact is that if you look at all the swords from all history, from all around the world, if we look at Indian swords, or if we look at Chinese swords, or we look at African swords, we look at ancient world swords, Greek or Roman or whatever, Thracian, and then you look at medieval swords, Renaissance swords, industrial uh, period swords, then medieval swords are quite heavy <laughs> there's no way there's no way to get around that there are a, they're not very much like not massively but they are within the grand scheme of swords from across the world from across history medieval swords are slightly on the heavy side okay now that's the first thing the second thing is blade width not only are medieval swords slightly on the heavy side but they tend to be and clearly i'm holding a viking era or anglo-saxon era style type 10 sword here which is particularly broad and medieval swords aren't all broad. There are some quite narrow uh, swords, particularly when you get into the 14th and 15th century. Um, but by and large, medieval swords are relatively broad. Um, now, I'm not going to say anything else about that because I've talked about the possible reasons for that. 
perhaps you know the, the ways that those swords were used the opposing armor the opposing weapons this kind of stuff there's all sorts of many reasons the material and this is the thing that i've spoken about most recently the material that medieval swords were made of possibly dictating their design i think it would be crazy to say that it didn't affect their design medieval steel is not very good compared to 17th century 18th century 19th century steel a 19th century saber is made of better quality steel almost always and, and certainly generally than a 14th century longsword that's just that's just a fact um, so inevitably material must have affected the design somehow um, how you, you think that it may have affected it that's open for, for debate but those two facts the fact that medieval swords are a little bit on the heavy side compared to swords you know from from the world and from many periods i have to say renaissance era swords as well if we go into kind of 16th 17th century swords they're not light either rapiers are very often as heavy as a viking era sword or a medieval arming sword as i've mentioned many times and other swords like uh, back swords broad swords mortuary hilts these sort of things are often fairly heavy as well um, so you know we must accept those things and we mustn't hide away from those things and it is important whilst we're trying to combat against misconceptions to not create new misconceptions okay let's try and stick to facts and statistics and try and answer questions that we don't have answers to anyway i'm going to finish up there but for 2019 Let's all, to follow Bill and Ted's advice, be excellent to one another. Let's stop sniping and bitching about other people. If someone's a problem, if someone's dangerous or, or has said something wrong, then fine, point it out. But this continual sniping of people that don't need to be sniped at, people who are just doing their thing, not doing anyone any harm, just let them get on with it and do your own thing and focus on making your world better and improve what you do, become a better person and become the person you want to be. Anyway, I will see you next time for the next video. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.